Hey everybody, Abolitionist Jay here with another entry in my vlog series that was designed to chronicle my attempted escape from New Yorkistan. Today is May 18th, 2018, and this should be the sixth entry, I believe. And hopefully this one's a little more positive than some of the last couple have been. Uh, I know I've had a lot to complain about, and uh, I do that quite well. I know. I've won awards for it in the past. Anyway, um, but hopefully this one's going to be a little bit more positive. Uh, in the last uh, installment, I do believe I discussed the uh, closing date for my house, which was finally supposed to be set. Unfortunately, it was pushed back an additional week from the last time I spoke about this, and I think during the last vlog, I, I talked about the fact that I was going to try to do one or two more of these before I actually got on the road. Now it's most likely going to be at least two more of these, this one and probably another one next week before I finally actually get out of here because with all the confusion and everything that keeps getting changed and all the holdups, uh, the date was moved around a bit. Finally, the date has been set though, May 31st. 2018, I will finally close on this damn house and be done with it. Now, that is a huge step for me. Uh, takes care of, well, starts to take care of a lot of issues, uh, mainly concerning money and the fact that my family and I have been hurting for it because we've been stuck with this house that we've been trying to get rid of. Um, so on that note, it's going to be great. Now, I'll still have my court case to deal with, and that is going to mean that my homelessness, you know, the attempt to try some uh, quasi van nomadism, nomadism stuff that I've talked about before uh, is going to be indefinite. I'm not exactly sure how it's, how long it's going to last. Uh, the minimum is probably going to be a month, Pro you know, more likely two at least, but who knows? You know, it, it all depends on the stupid court system and how much longer they drag me through this uh, process. But anyway, uh, like I said, the selling of the house is still a huge thing, and it's going to actually trigger the main portion of this vlog series where I'm hoping to actually do daily videos once I actually get out on the road, and Murder Dog and I are attempting to do some stealth camping and just, you know, living out of our vehicle. Uh, last night, Thursday the 17th, I actually recorded two different podcasts. One, I was a guest on the Vanu podcast with my buddies, uh, Jason Booth and Shane Radliff. And we were talking about, you know, the what I'm what I'm planning on doing, some of the ideas I've had and just getting a pretty much a baseline for their audience of what to expect from me in the coming months, because they cover a lot of topics. You know, obviously, it's the Vanu podcast. They talk about Vanu. They talk about things like van nomadism. Uh, my buddy Shane Radliff is somebody who's looking into doing the van nomadism thing full time within the next year or so. Me, I'm just kind of playing with this because I want to save as much money as possible once the house is finally sold. Because, you know, the whole purpose of selling the house was that my family and I had some money so that we could relocate to the Midwest and start our new life. So in an attempt to save as much of that money as possible once the house is sold and until the court case is finally settled, then we can actually finally move out of this state. Uh, I had planned all along to live out of my vehicle. And because I am friends with Shane and Jason and, and those guys at the Vanu Podcast, and I've been a listener of theirs for a long time, I've picked up a lot of tips and tricks, and I figured I, I would try this out. Now, I call it quasi-van nomadism because a lot of van nomad van nomads actually purchase specific vans and design them as a house. Myself, I have a Honda Element that I am going to attempt to live out of for the time being with the with Murder Dog. Um, you know, the, if you if you don't know anything about the Honda Element, it's kind of a boxy boxy SUV. Uh, decent amount of headroom in the back. Once you take the back seats out, there's a lot of, you know, there's enough room for even myself at six feet tall to lay down in the back and sleep relatively comfortably. So, you know, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do stuff like that to save money. And also the, uh, a big part of what, I, why I'm doing this is number one, to see if I could do it. 
number two, there's there's a bunch of people now, and like I said, we recorded an episode of the Vanu podcast, and then we actually recorded a, an episode of the Seeds of Liberty right after that, where we had Shane Radliff come on our show, and he, you know, we discussed things from his perspective. But there's there's a lot of people getting into this whole van nomadism thing, people moving into RVs and just saying, you know, the heck with it, we don't want this property, we don't want to deal with the government, you know telling us that claiming that we own property but then being able to take it away from us whenever they feel like it based on the property tax system so there's there's a big movement going towards this and there's a lot of people there's a lot of youtube channels and people chronicling what they're doing and while there are you know mistakes made along the way and you know people show those mistakes so others can learn from them i kind of figure where i'm coming from there's going to be a lot more mistakes and i'm okay with that because with my particular situation, the fact that I don't have to live out of my car right now, I'm choosing to do so, puts me at a little bit of an advantage. Also, the fact that you know once the house is sold and we pay off all our bills and stuff and we have our little nest egg left over for what's supposed to start our new life in the Midwest, I will technically have some of that as a safety net. So I can try exploring some of these ideas and testing some of these things out knowing that if it all goes horribly wrong, I'll still have something to fall back on. Not everybody who gets into this situation has that uh, luxury. So what I'm hoping to do by chronicling this entire journey and, you know, like I said, hopefully doing daily videos is to show people, you know, it may end up being a lot of what not to do. And I'm okay with that because as I described it last night on one of the two shows, I can't even remember which one right now because they kind of blended together. But, you know, I, I look at all these other YouTubers out there that are doing this van nomadism thing as the people who are out there trying to teach and the people out there presenting, you know, quality information, good, uh, good techniques, all these things. My series will probably be more like the blooper reel. But again, I'm okay with that because... Number one, I want to see what I can accomplish, you know, just me and the dog out there, what, I, what I'm actually capable of. Because as I also mentioned on, on the shows last night, this is something that ever since I started listening to the uh, Vanu podcast, the whole idea of van nomadism has really appealed to me. Um, I've always had dreams in the back of my mind of traveling, you know, in an RV, living out of, out of an RV for an extended period of time. It's something my wife and I have actually discussed off and on. Like both of us have had this, you know, dream of, you know, farther down the road doing this type of RV thing. But even though I want to do, you know, I my my goal is to get out of here, get to the Midwest, and start my farm. I'd still be able to tra- like to be able to travel like this, and this is an opportunity. I didn't think at my age with my kids and everything and the family, I didn't think I would ever get because, you know, I kind of thought that time was past. I'm, I'm a family guy now. I can't, you know, I don't have the time to do these things. I can't just pick up and leave my kids for, for days, weeks on end. But because I've kind of been a little bit, not necessarily forced, but I've been pushed into this direction because of the decisions we made and then everything that followed since then, um, I'm, I've been given this opportunity. And I feel I should take it, you know, and and obviously while I'm traveling around, while I'm living out of my vehicle, I'm not going to get to see my kids or my wife as much. And while I'm going to miss them greatly, and while I would much prefer to be with them, I'm going to try to use this opportunity to, again, do a lot of self-reflection and, you know, hopefully learn some more things about myself and in the long run, hopefully be able to teach others through, you know, like I said, I'm I'm going to assume most of my mistakes, uh, possibly my successes, but uh, I'll 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 be more of the realist here and say, yeah, sure, learn from my mistakes. Um, but that's really why I want to put this stuff out there. Now, obviously, I'm going to be sharing all these things to steam it first, as I as I usually do these days, in the hopes that other people will appreciate it and you know, up, upvote and resteam my stuff and maybe uh, get a little uh, passive income that way going. That would be great. Uh, but more importantly, I just I want that information out there, and I want people who either have heard of these ideas, have thought of these ideas, and want to just go try to test them out. Because if you listen to other van nomads, and you know you listen to the Vadu podcast, one of the things they talk about often is you know you should really plan this stuff out. You shouldn't just jump into this. I'm doing it again because I have certain advantages that other people don't. But also, I kind of figure, well, what if you're forced into this situation? You know, what if somebody is, you know, you lose your house in a, in a freak flood or a fire or, you know, whatever, whatever happens and all of a sudden you find yourself homeless 
and all you have is your vehicle, what do you do? So, like I said, that's why I kind of call it quasi-van nomadism, because it's not really the full van nomadism experience, but it's kind of like dipping your feet in. And again, hopefully other people will be able to benefit from this, especially if they find themselves in a situation where they're forced into this type of deal and, you know, they may not know what to do. So that's really what I'm hoping to accomplish. Um, You know, so like I said, today is the 18th. Uh, The closing is now officially less than two weeks away, 13 days from today on the 31st. So as of the night of May 31st, Murder Dog and I will be most likely, unless something else comes up, will most likely be spending, that will be our first night out on the road. Now, uh, we are going to bring our camping gear with us because I do have camping gear. You know, we we do like to camp and stuff like that. Uh, We are going to bring that with us. And we're kind of going to kind of take it as it goes. Um, you know, one of the things that a lot of van nomadism, van nomads and stuff recommend is, and my buddy Shane has actually sent me this link multiple times. There's a bunch of different websites that uh, list all the free campsites that are around the country. Unfortunately, there's not a single one here on Long Island. The closest free campsite is up in Connecticut. And while like distance wise, it's not horrible having to cross over the bridges and or over the over the it's the bay up there I forget what it whatever that waterway is between Connecticut and Long Island the Long Island Sound or is that the South I always forget anyway um, you know having to cross that that you know those type of things the bridges the extra money and all that stuff and then being that far away from my kids not really worth it there are a couple of paid campsites relatively close by we may make use of those we may not we're gonna kind of take it as it comes. Because as much as I love camping, I mean, I've done camping trips by myself up in the woods with friends in the woods. You know, we do the the festival, the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest and some of the other festivals every year. And I love those experiences. But in those situations, I'm either in a remote location where I'm not worried about it, somebody wandering in and stealing my stuff, or I'm in a large group of people where we know we can all trust each other and you can kind of just leave your tent open and stuff like that. I'm a little leery about setting up tent in one of these campgrounds and then like, you know, leaving for the day to go see my kids and stuff like that. So, yeah, we're really going to play it by ear. You know, like I said, there is enough room for me to sleep in the element. So that's going to be the plan. Um, I've I've purchased some things. Uh, I'm waiting on some of them to show up still. But in order to help me with that, and uh, that actually gets me into the next topic of some of the supplies that... uh, I'm uh, getting myself ready with to, uh, you know, take on this adventure. Now, I, I think I've spoke about in the past. I mean, obviously, my family and I have had some money issues lately. We, we, I actually had to set up a GoFundMe because the, the fact that the sale of the house has been held up for over two months longer than it was supposed to meant that we were running really low on funds. And, you know, this money was waiting for us, but we couldn't touch it. So, you know, we had to ask for some help. Uh, we did have some money left on an Amazon account. But unfortunately, there's only so many things you could buy with Amazon. So it wasn't like we could pay bills with that. So that money just kind of sat there. Now that the set, the closing date has finally been set, we know that we have this money coming in. We could actually start using some of this other, other money. So I made use of Amazon and made some purchases for myself, uh, most of which came recommended through either the guys at the Vanu podcast or things they've talked about um, or other people. Or, you know, I'm very big on reading the Amazon reviews and stuff like that. So... Some of the things that I've purchased, and I think altogether it's all you know it's been under two hundred bucks, um, which you know maybe a lot for some people. It's not like cheap for us right now, but the all, everything that I've purchased will be used in other situations too. This is not just just for this adventure. Um, I I made sure to buy things that have multiple purposes, so you know we'll get lots of use out of them. So. You know, one of the things I've discussed before, I'm pretty sure I've discussed it through this vlog series, is one of the things I picked up through the Vanu podcast is something like getting yourself a membership to Planet Fitness because, you know, they have a a month, a low monthly rate, and then you can go in there and shower, uh, work out if you want to, make use of some of their other services. And the number $10 a month kept getting thrown around. That's what the guys at the Vanu podcast kept saying. Apparently, we found out last night that it's actually $10 a month is only for if you want to have a monthly membership to your local Planet Fitness, which for my purposes right now would work because I have one about two, two and a half miles north of where I currently reside. And it's actually uh, in the direction of where my children and, and wife are living. So 
that could work out. But they actually offer something even better that we found out for twenty one dollars a month. Not only do you get uh, you know access to to your local gym, but you can use any Planet Fitness around the world. And you get a whole bunch of other things like, you know, you can use their Wi-Fi, you can use their sauna services, that free, free use of their massage services, and free haircuts. Like, for 21 bucks a month, that's a pretty insane deal. I, however, am not yet going to purchase one of those memberships. I had talked about doing it in the past. I had kind of decided I was going to do it. And then the more I thought about it, I said, well, you know, that's nice to have, but it's also nice to know that I have it there so I can get it at any time. And to go along with my idea of just trying to kind of feeling my way out through this and testing certain things out, I figured, well, yeah, I, I could do that, but there's other products I could purchase and try to do these things on my own instead. So I went looking and what I did was I ended up, uh, one of the things I purchased was one of those solar showers. And, you know, it's a giant bag. You set it out in the sun. It gets all warmed up. It's got a temperature gauge on it. You hang it from a tree. It's got a nice little shower head on it. And uh, you could take a shower uh, out in the woods or wherever you are. And, you know, I picked up one of those that was pretty highly rated for only 18 bucks. So I figure I could spend the 10 or 21 bucks for the month at Planet Fitness so I could ensure that I would have nice hot showers and stuff. Or I could spend the $18 on this solar shower, which I would be able to use for more, again, than just this trip. I'd be able to use it for the entire length of time we're at it, that I'm out of the house and also for future camping trips and stuff like that. So, you know, for 18 bucks sounded like a great investment to me. So I picked one of those up, actually tested it out yesterday, had it, you know, filled it up, had it in the shower, was testing everything out, making sure there was no leaks. Uh, looks like it's going to be good. Uh I'll, I'll pause briefly to, to say that uh, this product and all the other ones that I have purchased and am, and am going to talk about, I plan on writing uh, you know relatively extensive reviews on once I'm done. I am a huge fan of the Amazon review system. I think it goes a long way towards the type of reputation economy that I'm a big fan of, you know, moving forward, trying to get to a free society. And, you know, that's how you get to know about these products that you, when you buy online, you may not get to hold in your hands or test out first. You rely on other people's opinions. So I'm a big fan of, you know, writing reviews when you get things, good or bad, whatever it is, letting people know uh, if they should trust trust this product or not. Uh, so so I, I plan on doing that. So the uh, the solar shower, definitely going to give a, I think it's re. R U I P O O R U P U. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think it's the name of the company. But anyway, we'll we'll be uh, testing that out in in full and actually taking a shower with it soon, and uh, I'll have more information about that. Uh, another thing I picked up to go with the solar shower is one of those pop up shower tents. You know, little tent design looks kind of like an outhouse almost, but it's literally a pop up tent, and you throw that thing up. It takes you know less than a minute to set up. And now you have someplace to shower inside, so you're not just standing out in the woods somewhere. The great thing about this little shower uh, stall thing is it can actually double as a bathroom. Because that was the other thing that, you know, kept be being a cause of concern. It's like, well, yeah, sure, you figure out where you take showers and stuff where you when you're living out of your car on the road. But what if you have to go to the bathroom? Yeah, I mean, sure, you can stop in stores and restaurants and hope you can use their bathrooms. That was another reason the Planet Fitness thing was appealing. It's like, well, if I have a membership, I can walk in there whenever I want. So if I just if I'm driving in the area and I gotta go, I just go in there. But again, yeah, that sounds great. But what happens if I'm far away from there and I can't get there in time and I really gotta go? So another simple purchase I made: snap-on toilet seat, fits on any five-gallon bucket. Boom, ten bucks toilet seat. Yeah, you have an old five-gallon bucket lying around, which I happen to have multiple clean, unused buckets lying around. Bam, you've just created yourself a bathroom. So if you add, take the $10 uh, toilet seat lid, the bucket, however much that costs you to buy, I think you know I bought them for like five bucks at one point, and uh, the $30 uh, bathroom stall, and boom, you've got yourself a bathroom that travels with you. So I, you know, I picked one of those up. Again, would it be nice to have, you know, a nice cozy bathroom where you could sit in and maybe read for a while and not have to worry about somebody like sneaking up on you? Sure. But, you know, I'm going to be out of the house. I'm going to be living on the road. These are things you have to take into consideration. So I pick one of those up. 
another thing I picked up was an electro uh, an electric cooler for the car. You know, great little inventions, coolers that work without ice. I think I got something like a thirty four quart one for sixty bucks. And again, uh, came you know it came with pretty good reviews, and I'm going to test it out and see. The one I bought is uh, I think it's a Knox. It also it's not just a, cool, a cooler; it also it can be a warmer too. You can flip the switch and uh, keep stuff warm if you want to. Now, one of the advantages I will have going out there is I don't care about drinking warm water. I used to be one of those spoiled people that would only drink cold water, but over the years, I've finally gotten re- used to drinking room temperature water, and I have no problem with it. I just want to be hydrated. I don't care if it, you know, obviously in certain situations, it's nice to have a cold drink, but on the regular, eh, warm water is fine. So I could pick up a couple of cases of you know bottled water at the local box store, the BJ's or the Costco or something, for a few bucks and be stocked up with water for quite a while as far as drinking water. And I don't have to worry about keeping that cool. So the cooler may not even be on all the time. It'll just be there for if I have specific food that needs to be kept cold or something like that. Or, you know, one day that I really want to have something kept cold. You know, it's it's a good thing to have. But I do also want to conserve energy. And, few, you know, f- because I'm living out of the car, that means gas. You know, I, have to, I want to conserve fuel. So I'm going to use it as sparingly as possible. I've also read a lot of the reviews. A lot of people got away with sticking those like little frozen, uh, fr- you know, freeze packs in there, and it actually, you know, you could actually turn the thing on only for a couple hours, leave the freeze packs in there. They still end, everything still ends, uh, uh, ends up staying cold all day, so that's great. Um, so that was another thing I purchased. Uh, one of the last things I ordered, which I'm still waiting on now, and unfortunately I waited a little too long because they ran short of the amount that I wanted to order, but. Uh, this was another thing that came highly recommended to me was blackout curtains for the car. And I got a great deal. I think it was like nine bucks for two for a two pack. And I bought a couple of them. Unfortunately, I wanted to buy four. By the time I actually placed the order, there was only three packs left. But whatever, we'll make do. Um, but these little suction cup uh, curtains, blackout curtains that you can stick on the windows and can, you know black out the inside of the car as much as possible. Uh, this uh, provides uh, a number of benefits. Number one. Uh, for sleeping purposes, obviously, you don't have to worry, worry about the sun waking you up in the in, first thing in the morning if you don't want to get up that way because you're, you know, in in as much darkness as you could possibly be. Number two, from a security aspect, people can't really be peering in on you. Now, granted, my element does have tinted windows in the back, you know, the the quote unquote legal level of tint, um, so you have to get really up close to the window to actually see anything anyway. But this just adds an extra layer of protection, um, security, so people can't just be peering in and seeing what I'm up to. Or if I'm sleeping, people can't like look in and see, oh, he's sleeping. Well, let's take advantage of him now type of thing. Uh, the third thing, uh, which goes along with the second thing as far as security, these also go a long way towards uh, helping out with what's called stealth camping which is a lot of what I plan on doing because, as I mentioned before, there's not any free campsites. The couple of campsites that are here are a little spread out, so I may not actually get down to the campsites every night to uh, set up camp. So i you know, going to be sleeping in the car. But you know, if you pass out in your car, you pass in your car. If you're setting up to sleep in your car, you have to be a little careful because you know there's stupid parking rules and where you're allowed to park at night, yada, yada, yada. And then, of course, depending on the jurisdiction you're in, there may just be cops who cruise around with nothing better to do looking to harass people. So setting up to sleep in your car at night, you know, when you're living at a vehicle like this, the term they use for it is stealth camping because, yeah, you're trying to hide and not get busted by the police, not get harassed, not have somebody knock on your window and say, hey, you can't be here or, hey, move it along, that type of thing. So the blackout curtains will definitely help in that regard, too. So I'm looking forward to having those uh, those show up. They should be here tomorrow, I think. Uh, well, of course, Amazon's two, two-day two prime delivery the past couple times has been three days or more, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, I, I do have some more time. Uh, let me just look really quick. I think that's... Oh, and, oh yes, and another very important item I picked up. Uh, I almost forgot. This was actually the first one I picked up, and I've been holding it for quite a while now because it came highly recommended to me last year at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest by my friend Derica Claus because she had one there and I wanted to get one anyway and now that I'm going to be put into this situation it's even more imperative I think I have one and this is one of those folding solar chargers and these things are pretty amazing it's you know fold up solar panel basically that has two USB ports 
And you could charge your phone, charge your laptop. For me, charging my Kindle is going to be a big thing because I plan on doing a lot of reading when I'm out there. Um, so, you know, this is great. You just hang the, you either put this thing on, you know, if you're in the car like I'm going to be, if it's a sunny day, you can either leave it on your, you know, leave it on your dashboard. The sun will hit it and it'll, you know, power up the solar panel and charge your stuff. It's designed with straps on it. So you can hang it outside your window if you want. Just have it hanging out the window with the core, you know, with the USB cords running inside, um, inside the car or wherever you want to set it up. And like I said, this, this one in particular came highly recommended. Um, my friend Derek raved about this thing. So I made sure I went and picked one up. And now I have one. I have considered getting a second one, although at 50 bucks a pop, I'm running a little low on the mon money we had in there. So I'm trying to be as uh, judicious with the, uh, with the money as possible. So I figure I'm going to test the first one out, see how that goes. If I really think that I could use more power, then I might consider picking up a second one, especially once the house is officially sold and we have a little bit more money to play with. It'll probably make more sense to do it then. Uh, but we'll see, because when it comes to like full-scale van nomadism, like my buddy Shane Radleff is going to do, a lot of people uh, actually set their vans up with permanent solar panels to you know, get a lot of their energy from there. Since this is a temporary thing for me, I'm obviously not going to drill holes and put solar panels on the roof of my truck just yet. But having these, temp you know, having these kind of portable ones, I think is a really good idea. So uh, I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of that because, again, obviously, living out of my car means that all of my electricity is going to be driven off of the off the fuel in my car, and I want to try to conserve that as much as possible. So, having things like a solar charger, big deal, going to going to help out a lot, I, I assume. And again, based on all the reports and reviews I've heard of this, it will definitely uh, be a be a big advantage for me. And you know, other than that. It's, uh, you know, like some of the other things I plan on doing is, uh, of course, bringing a really big ass extension cord with me. And I figure, you know, like I said, I'll I'll try to charge things through the solar power as much as possible. Uh, you know, I already have a uh, power inverter in my car. I've always had one of those because I, I like to plug different things in and I've always been that type of guy. So I already have one of those. So, you know, I'll try to charge things while I'm driving different places while the car is already running. So I'm not using too much extra fuel and stuff like that. And when possible, I'll try to take some power from where I can, whether I, you know, visit somebody who's willing to, you know, hey, can I throw a power cord out for a little while, that type of thing. If I end up at a campsite that has power um, or if I end up some other place that people don't seem to mind, if I plug in for a little while, I'm definitely going to try to take advantage of things like that. So uh, for anybody considering trying like something like this, a big ass power cord. 100 footer I have in the garage luckily probably not a bad idea um so yeah so I'm gonna do stuff like that as I've talked about you know like I said I'm gonna try to do daily videos that's the plan we're gonna see how the quality for that turns out because I am gonna be recording from my car um you know like I do all these videos on my laptop as you can see uh, the audio should be good the video Decent, but you know, it's the integrated camera on the laptop. I don't have a fancy, you know, separate webcam with a, with a higher resolution. So, you know, depending on the, the the environments I'm in, the quality of my videos may dip a little bit. I'm hoping not. Uh, there's also a possibility that some of the videos, some of the vlogs I'm going to record on my phone because it just might be easier to do that. Uh, the video quality is actually even better from when I do it on my phone. The audio quality, not so much. So, uh, but I will try to do my best to provide, you know, a, as good quality content and not just, you know, pumping out content because obviously I want people to listen. But I do want to give fair warning that it may not be up to the standards I'm always used to because, you know, going back to the whole energy consumption thing, it's not going to be a problem for me to flip on the laptop in the morning and record a 10, 20, 30 minute video or whatever it is because, you know, laptop has two, three hours of battery power on it. You know, I could record a couple of those before the laptop's done and needs to be recharged. That's not a problem. Editing, however, takes, you know, usually the the way I figured it is it takes almost about, yeah, just about twice as long to edit any uh, video that I have or audio piece. You know, however long that piece is, figure about twice that time in order to actually finish the editing process. So that's something I'm not really going to have the luxury to do. I'll have the time to do it, 
but I'm not going to be one of wasting the fuel in order to do it. So I'll do my best to do great first takes and uh, try to keep the audio quality as and video quality as great as I can. Uh, and then hope that people understand if they suffer a little bit because, you know, like I said, I'm going to be out and about trying to do these things as I go. But, uh, you know, that's hopefully uh, what you can look forward to. So I think that's about all I have for today. Uh, I've been going look, looking at the clock. I'm doing our, already about a half an hour already. I didn't even expect to go this long today. But anyway, there was a lot to talk about. So once again, the closing date for my house has been set for May 31st, 2018. So 13 days from today, which is May 18th, I will be finally starting the temporary yet indefinite homelessness, uh, which I am calling quasi-van nomadism. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an adventure. You know, like I said, there's obviously I'm still under a lot of stress right now. You know, I'm, I'm, I've am been slowly packing up the house because I've been here by myself a lot because the, the kids and uh, my wife are, are back at their apartment already um, just to make life easier for everybody. So I see them during the day, but at night I'm here by myself. So I've been packing up slowly and stuff like that, making all the phone calls to close out all the accounts and everything that I have. And, you know, still have the court case hanging over my head. So, and this is all come, you know, I've been waiting for the sale of the house and now all of a sudden it's here and it's coming like tomorrow. So I'm under a lot of stress, but I am in a much more positive frame of mind than I have been in the past couple of videos and uh, just for, or in the past couple of weeks or months overall, because as, as stressful as this could be and as, you know, risk as risky as what I'm about to embark on can be. It's a it's an adventure and I'm looking forward to it. And despite everything else that's still hanging over my head, this is one of the huge hurdles that was in our way. And taking care of this one really does take a huge weight off of me. And once we can have that actually actually have that money <laughs> in, well, not in our hands, you know, we can have those we can have those ones and zeros transferred to our account and we can pay off all these bills so we can get the creditors off our back and we finally have some money. It'll be it'll be a lot less stressful. So yeah, big deal, big happenings, and uh, as you could tell, I, I hope I hope it's coming through in this that I'm I'm definitely in a much more positive mood. I mean, heck, I'm smiling today. That doesn't happen often. I'm the angry young man, or angry not so young man anymore, I guess. But yeah, so if I'm smiling, things got to be good. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I think that's, uh, I think that's about it. So I appreciate everybody for, uh, watching. This has been Abolitionist J. Uh, this is, I think, like I said, I think this is part six of my vlog series. Uh, there will probably be at least one more next week with just another update as we're getting closer. Uh, also if any of the other items that I picked up or any ideas I picked up along the way, uh, I'll try to throw them in there too. And then hopefully, the next time you hear from me after that in this vlog series will be the first vlog from the Honda Element from my moving house with Murder Dog and I. So, once again, thank you everybody for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace.